In this video, we'll create an interesting circle shape layers transition. Without wasting any more time, let's jump to it. Let's start by creating a new composition. I'm going to name it Transition 1920 by 1080. Click OK. Then grab the ellipse tool. Make sure it's fairly set to none and its stroke is set to a solid color of 300 pixels. Then create an ellipse. Hold Shift to give it proportional size. Open the Align tab and align your ellipse in the center. Then open up the properties of Ellipse 1, go to Ellipse Path 1, and here size so set it to 300. Then click on the Add button and add Trim Paths. Open up Trim Paths 1, create keyframes for end and offset at the beginning of your composition. Set end value to 0. And then open up Stroke 1, set keyframe for Stroke Width, set it to 0. Also set Line Cap to Round Cap. After that, move one second forward, or however long you want your animation to be, and change out the value. So first set end to 100%, and offset angle should be 180 degrees. Also stroke width, set it back to 300. By doing all that, our main animation is complete. Let's now press U to see just those keyframes. Select them all, right click keyframe assistant easy ease, or you can press F9 as a shortcut, that will smoothen out the animation. Now we can start duplicating the circles. Let's move to one second so our circle is fully visible. Select the shape layer one and press Ctrl D to duplicate it. And right here in the search bar type size so we can see just the size property and increase the size for shape layer two so it's bigger than the first one and align it properly so you don't get any bits poking through. And let's do that again. Select the shape layer two, press Ctrl D. Again, reset the size in search bar Increase the size of the third circle too and align it properly. And let's do that one more time. Select the circle number three, press Ctrl D, reset the size and increase the size until it's, it covers an entire screen. And here you can see the end result. You can see that all the layers are animated simultaneously from the same angle. And we don't want that. We want to give them some variation. So the layers animate from different angles. For that, let's press U twice to close all those keyframes. Select all the layers here, press R for rotation. We're going to individually offset the rotation values for the layers. So make sure you deselect first. For the shape layer number two, set rotation to 90 degrees. For the third one, 180. And for the fourth one, 270. Now our layers will animate from different angles, therefore making our animation a bit more interesting. The next step would be to duplicate these layers. Let's select them all here. Press Ctrl D to duplicate them and make sure to bring them up. Give them a different color tag so you can differentiate between them. Also, you can change the color of the actual stroke up here and you're free to choose your own colors for this. And the idea here is to offset the top layers by two frames. So go to the beginning of your timeline and move two frames forward by pressing page down twice and drag the layers, align them to the blue playhead. By doing this, we've added more variation and colors to our animation, but it doesn't look that great, so we're going to fix that. Keep your top layers selected. Press R for rotation. And for the first one, where it says zero, drag it up until it's 180. So keep dragging it up. You don't have to be super precise. Just do something similar to 180. This improves the overall flow of our animation. As you can see, that the space is getting filled quicker. Now let's mark the end point of the animation. So press U to see the keyframes and go to one second, two frames, the last keyframes of our top layers. Click away so you're not selecting any shape layers and press asterisk to create a marker. Now let's select all the layers on your timeline. For that, you need to press Ctrl A to select all the layers. Then right click any of them, press pre-compose and let's call this N for N animation. Click OK. Then navigate to your project panel Select the In Composition, press Ctrl D to duplicate it, and rename it to Out. Then double click on it to open it up, and remove the top four layers. Select them, press Delete. Then go back to the main transition comp, open it up, and drag Out Composition here on top of the In one, and then drag it and align it to the blue playhead or to the marker that we've created before, so to one second, two frames. Also, we need to change the track mode options for our in layer. If you don't see the track mode option, just click on the toggle switch mode. You'll see the track mode column appear. And wait, it says none. Click on that drop down and set it to alpha inverted matte. And the idea here is that once the first layer finishes animating, the second one will start cutting into it. And those cuts will be transparent, therefore revealing your videos or your photos. 
You can see that we've got a marker indicating the end of our composition at 2 seconds 4 frames. So move the playhead to that and press N to bring out the composition endpoint. Then right click on the space in between the endpoints and click on trim come to work area. By that we trim the composition down and get rid of all the excess parts that we don't need. Let me show you a real life example of how you can use those transitions. So let me open up this footage comp where I have two clips with a rough cut in between. Let's apply the animation or the transition. So bring it in, drop it on top of the videos and you can see the marker in between so it's really easy to manage it. So just align it in between the clips and just like that you've got yourself a nice shaped transition. You can even duplicate it, apply it to different clips and create multiple transitions like this. If you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something new, please give this video a like. I would really appreciate that. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.